Uh, this is a Lynx, Lynxman golf cart, and yes, I have uh, put it together a number of times, so it's beginning to look a little bit like Frankenstein. Um, however, uh, I do have the equipment, the tools, the know-how, so we're going to go ahead and repair this brake. There's a we're, we're going to open this thing up, and you're going to see how this thing is put together. It does have a little ear, if you will, that's on this metal gear thing, and there's a lot of force on it. So uh, this has been the second time that I have welded it uh, to repair it, and the first time I did it, I just basically put the two pieces together and did a butt joint and welded it and it lasted for a little while maybe a few months um, but I think the amount of torque and the pressure that's on is just too much so what we're going to do is we're going to take it back apart and this time we're going to weld an additional piece of metal scab on another piece of metal over the brake and uh, strengthen it up uh, so you can see a previous repair that chrome piece of metal uh, was put in there because the aluminum that connected to that little uh, elbow part broke like a year ago and so that was my scab so inside of this pipe is the uh, male part of the lower arm and it sticks into it and we've got to get it out because that's the part that has um, the ear on it and I'm gonna call it an ear and you'll see why there's a two little cobs in, inside of this plastic case and you're going to see how it's put together and so okay so now th this is the cover and you're you're go I have exposed the screws but you're gonna have to feel it with your finger and and basically the tape the logo the decal covers up where the screws are so just be aware of that just feel where the screws are otherwise you're going to tear it apart and um, uh, now the other thing is as you're unscrewing it the back side of it does have a small uh, hex nut in it and you got to hold it so that you will uh, not just spin 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 but it's actually going to unscrew it and so there it is it's still kind of stuck together a little bit and just going to take a little bit more uh, aggression if you will to pop it open but that's what we got to do. I think in this case I'm fooling around with it not realizing that one of the screws although very loose it still had um, a few th it still had the nut connected to it so if if it ain't coming off easily sort of do a little bit of investigation and determine are all of the screws out are all the nuts off and uh, uh, keep all those pieces put them put them away put them away safe because you know sure enough you scattered them all over the place and then you can't find them when you need to put it back together so there it is i'm sort of figuring out there's one little bugger still left in there so uh it's taking a little bit more effort all right there we go now you can see that these two cobs and um it's not a great design i mean it works uh one, one could argue and say well why not just get a new cart and you know they're, they're not that expensive but uh, it's also one of those things if you've got the tools and the equipment why not go ahead and fix it yourself so that little ear that broke off we're removing it from the pipe the uh, male pipe that fits into that chrome female pipe and so that we can expose the metal so there there's the ear that and you can see why it breaks off there's a fair bit of torque on that thing with the weight of the cart uh, uh, on that little uh, it's not that thick it's only like an eighth of an inch thick piece of metal so we're going to do two things we are going to uh, butt joint it and weld it or well, what I'm doing here is I want it flat uh, because when we stick a another piece of metal over the brake we want it to be smooth and flat and because it has been welded once before uh, we 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 have to flatten it out so I'm just taking it to the uh, bench grinder and smoothing it out getting it ready uh, to to be butt joint welded again cleaning it up just do a couple dry fits looking at the edges also looking good I 
That should work. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clean off some of the previous uh, weld. I want it flat because we're going to stick another piece of metal over top of it. So when we put that piece of metal on it, we want it to be uh, flat. So I'm basically cleaning up uh, this part of it. Double check in the dry fit. Dry fit looks good. Now I'm going to take a pair of vice grips and just hold that little piece. What I want to do is I want to tack one end of it, remove the vice grip, and then complete the weld. So that's just there to hold the two pieces together while I get ready to tack it. There's a good picture of what it looks like. And here you can see the settings on the MIG welder. Uh, this seems to work pretty good. Now both of these steels are fairly mild, um, um, I'd have to say. So you kind of have to watch it. Always go a little bit lighter so you don't blow through it. I got my ground. Make sure I've got my gloves on. Get my welder ready. Now something that I, I like to do is I like to use a stick to sort of steady my hand because um, you know, I'm getting into a fairly tight little spot. So here I'm going to just tack it. I'm going to remove the vice grip so that I can complete the weld. Because right now what we're doing is we're basically welding a butt joint. I'm kind of going slow with it because you can apply too much heat and next thing you know you've basically blown through this metal. Again, it's fairly soft metal. It's not real high quality made in China. Now I'm just going to go ahead and complete the butt joint. The wire speed is at 60. The gauge is at my on this on my setting is 7.5, which I think is about a 14 gauge. And I'm welding with uh, 030 uh, uh, standard wire, not arc weld or not oxygen or acetylene. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and check my butt joint. You know, it's it's fairly strong, but again, this is the second time that I've made this repair, and I don't want to have to have it fall apart on the golf course, which is quite awkward to um, have a pretty significant part of the cart fall apart. also want to clean up the back side of it. I'm also going to weld the back side because I, I, I want to get as much penetration and strength of this weld as possible. Plus I'm here. And so even though I've got pretty good penetration from welding it on one side, I'm flipping it over. And I mean, it's a small joint. We're only talking about something that's what less than an inch wide. So, uh, um, it's at, we're asking it to do quite a bit of structural stress, so I, I want to give it as best chance of success as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and run uh, a, another bead of weld on the back side of this piece of metal, cleaning it, cleaning up the metal. I'm also cleaning up the, the edges, making it square. What we have to do is we have to take another piece of metal and lay it on top of this joint, splice it. So instead of a butt joint, I forgot what it's called, but, but we, we weld an additional piece um, um, over top and overlap the joint so we get additional strength. You know, it's pretty strong. And so this this is from metal edging. It's about an eighth of an inch. It's also relatively soft metal. 
I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece almost the width of that little ear. This is pretty self-explanatory. Cut through it. I'm also going to clean it up after cutting through it. It's a, it's a little raggedy. So I want to clean up the edges, have everything the same thickness, nice and flat. I'm going to All right, there's the piece. Now, even though I've cleaned the weld and it's relatively flat, it's not completely perfectly flat on uh, the two pieces. So we're gonna use the vice grip and I'm gonna weld one half of it and then I'm gonna use the uh, vice grip and uh, attach the unwelded part so that it's tight and flush up against the other half of this metal. Now again, this is fairly soft steel, so I'm having to be somewhat uh, gentle with, with the welding. So instead of just like letting it rip and run, uh, I'm, I'm sort of doing it in, in a little bit more staged. I mean, that's it. I mean, we're not talking about a whole lot. So I'm gonna take this vice grip off and I'm going to uh, attach the vice grip to the front of this piece of steel and and get it tight up against the base metal. The base metal is the original metal that we butt jointed. That's part of the original cart. See I can just go ahead and uh, tack one end of it and then remove the vice grip so that I can weld around the and what I'm doing is I'm actually welding around the entire uh, piece of metal remove the vice grip now let's go around all all four sides of this piece of metal I'm trying to get my hand in a nice comfortable spot following the edge I'm just watching that I have a nice, warm, hot, molten piece that I keep adding uh, well to. It's not much. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot. And now we're cleaning it up. Now, because there is a little plastic piece that fits over this, and it, it's it's uh, uh, its purposes so that it fits into that pipe, and uh, because the pipe is round and this little ear is is sort of flat, uh, that little plastic piece uh, is designed to take up any 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 space, any s cleaning up both sides. Now we are going to have to make a little customizing. Uh, oh, w one thing before that, because that metal, that little scab piece I welded on, we have to drill a hole through it in the same place that the original holes were so that the new screws will um, uh, go through it. Okay, so now these are the two little plastic pieces that I talked about. Because I've got this scabbed piece of metal over top, well, the diameter has changed, so I'm going to have to take that uh, plastic piece and uh, grind it down to compensate for the additional thickness of that uh, um, additional piece of metal. So it's about an eighth of an inch thick, so we're going to have to uh, grind off about an eighth of an inch off of this plastic insert. I've marked it. I go to the grinder. I mean, you could use whatever, but since my grinder is here, uh, it's pretty quick. I've got pretty good control over uh, the depth that it's going into the plastic, making sure that I'm not going too deep. I 
I would say from start to finish uh, this project, probably about, oh, I'm thinking maybe about an hour and a half, maybe. I mean, it takes a little bit of time to organize and get the tools. Okay, so that little piece of metal that we originally popped out of uh, that female chrome piece, uh, the end kind of got real beat up because I had to use a hammer to bang it out. So I'm having to file it so that it will uh, refit into the chrome piece. So that's what I'm doing here. I actually add a little bit of grease onto it so that it'll slide in a little bit easier. She's real tight. And I think, again, we've probably uh, messed with the clean round diameter. So there I'm just putting a little bit of a little bit of grease on it so that I can get it to slide in. Using a rubber mallet to, to pop the two pieces in. Remember, it's kind of a male, male goes into the female chrome piece. You know, sometimes we fix things just because we can, not not, not necessarily because it's economically uh, uh, feasible, but um, it does continue to sharpen our skills and uh, we increase our ability to take something apart and put it back together and perhaps we even make it stronger in the in the process. So it took a, it took a fair bit of pounding. I just had to make sure that I went in deep enough so that the screws that hold the two pieces together would would uh, fit through it. I ended up just taking the drill and uh, uh, making the holes uh, true again. So I put that drill bit back on and I'm going through um, one side through to the other side just so it's going to be easier to line up my screws and get it through. And so that's it. You got to make sure that the release is uh, in the right position so that that's the part that you pull up and then, all right.